And James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, came up to him saying to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant that we may sit with you in your glory, one on your right and one on your left. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking for. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you shall drink. And you shall be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. But to them, but to sit on the right or the left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. The account of James and John and Jesus happened before the Last Supper, and yet uh, very closely to that event. The cup. What is in the cup? There are various types of cups that you might find in your home, a coffee cup that that holds the contents of your coffee and and uh, keeps it warm and helps you to be able to enjoy the flavor and the aroma. Maybe a, a tin cup that you use to measure or to go camping with or or maybe a fancy hand uh, lathed cup made for decorative purposes. There are tea cups and there are wine glasses and all kinds of cups and the and the cup reminds us of the things of life. James and John came up asking Jesus for a favor. Can we sit with you, one on the right and the other on the left? And, and Jesus asked them a question. Can you drink of the cup that I am about to drink? And they replied, yes, we can. We are able, not really understanding what Jesus had asked of them or implied that they would do. And yet Jesus agreed with them. You will drink of the cup. You will share the baptism. Well, what did Jesus mean? What was in the cup that they were about to drink? Well, a cup often is used in the scriptures to represent a person's life. And maybe the contents of that cup, the things that are going to happen in a person's life. It represents the experiences, uh, the challenges, the opportunities. You and I have a cup also. What's in the cup? What was in Jesus' cup? What's in our cup? And, and I believe that in every cup, every life, there is sweetness and there is also Bitterness. Jesus' cup contains some bitterness, physical suffering, illness, loss of friendships, betrayal, people that should have understood that didn't, the tragedies and deaths of loved ones, and the fear of death. Jesus experienced those, and on top of that, the, the cup of his life included the agony of suffering for the sins of the world and the loneliness of the father turning his face away and the betrayal and the brutality and the crucifixion. And the cup of Jesus' life included some joy and some laughter, some sweetness, the presence of little children that he invited to come and to, to sit with him the acts of kindness that men and women did for him, the music of children singing and dancing in the marketplaces, the conversations he had with loved ones as they walked along the roads of Galilee and Judea. And there were the prayers and the healings and the hopes. Lazarus was raised from the dead. The disciples shared stories and sometimes survived the the encounters of stormy seas and all kinds of arguments and teachings and conversations with Pharisees and adversaries. 
But above all, Jesus' cup held the most powerful sweetener ever imagined, the sweetener, the blessing of resurrection for himself and for all who would put their trust, their faith in him. James and John answered the question, yes, we can drink that cup, Lord, without really knowing what was in Jesus' cup or in their own, for that matter. And they ultimately drank the cup. They each dealt with their own times of living as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus. And and as the history tells us, they also suffered death as they followed Jesus and, and lived for him. The question also, I think, comes to us. Will you and I drink the cup? Will a disciple who follows after Jesus drink the cup? You see, the life of a disciple does contain some bitterness. There are illnesses. There are losses of loved ones. There are disappointments. There are prayers that go unanswered. There are times when things don't go as we planned, and maybe we have to make new plans or new adjustments. The life of a disciple obviously has blessings, laughter and friendship and encouragement and hope and worship and faithfulness and and believers gather together in in uh, celebration and fellowship will you drink the cup of a disciple of Jesus will you choose to follow him will you dedicate yourself to going wherever he leads you to go today as we are gathered here on Monday Thursday We share the cup, the cup of that last supper, reminder of what Jesus did. And and Jesus on that night, before he was betrayed, he, he took bread and a cup. Simple elements of life, bread and a cup. And he shared it with his disciples, his most Precious friends, he said, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. And then as he blessed it and he shared it with them, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And so this evening, wherever you are in your own home, your own surrounding, I I hope that you can follow us. Maybe you can push pause or come back to this, but Maybe you can gather together your own communion elements, a piece of bread or a piece of a cracker and maybe a a cup with some juice or even water because after all, Jesus can change water into wine and share the Last Supper, the communion celebration with us. As we share the bread... I'm going to invite us to pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, the bread that represents your body broken for us, we share together this evening. A reminder that you did this, that you were broken, that you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, that the punishment for our sin is upon you. And so, God, as we take of this bread May it always remind us or continually remind us or every time we take of it, remind us of what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so I invite you to take the bread, remembering that this is his body broken for you. Shall we take of it together? And the cup reminds us of Jesus' blood reminds us that he was killed, crucified, that the blood that drained from his body that flowed down that cross and dripped to the ground was the blood that cleanses all sin and all unrighteousness, the blood of Jesus that makes all the difference. And so we share together this evening the cup that reminds us of Jesus' blood. May we pray together. Our God God and Father, as we 
share the cup this evening, a reminder of your blood shed for us. As the scripture says, on the behalf of many for forgiveness of sin, Lord, we take of it and trust that your death on the cross was sufficient to take away our sin, that you are a God who is more than able to make us whole and clean and new by your precious blood. And so, Lord, we take of this reminder of what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And I invite you to drink of the cup as a reminder of what Jesus did for you. Shall we take of it together? The disciples then left, went out from that upper room, walked across the Kidron Valley and and up the hill to the Garden of Gethsemane where they gathered in that quiet place. And Jesus said to most of his disciples, sit here while I go over yonder and pray. And the scripture says he went about a stone's throw from them and James and John and Peter followed a little closer and he began to pray. And he prayed to his heavenly father, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And as he prayed three times, each time he came back and found the disciples asleep and yet resolved each time that he would drink the cup, that he would take on himself the the sin of the world, the punishment uh, that we deserve. And so he went forward, choosing to do that which God had given him to do. He drank the cup, the cup of his life. Shall we close in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you chose to suffer and die in our place. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your sacrifice, by your stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you chose to walk that road so that we might have everlasting life. Help us, Lord, to remember that you loved us so much that you are willing to do that. And so help us to follow after you, to drink the cup of a disciple and to follow after you and be willing to, to give our lives in sacrifice or in service for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you and invite you to join us tomorrow evening for a, a short a Good Friday devotion, uh, tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock. And then as uh, we gather together on Easter Sunday, uh, we'll be online again and invite you to, to join us at 9.30 on uh, Easter Sunday morning. If you'd like to dress up for Easter Sunday and you want to do that uh, wherever you are, you're welcome to do, to do that. If you want to want to stay in your, your pajamas and your bathrobe this Easter, then uh, nobody's going to know but you anyway. So uh, celebrate Easter in uh, whatever way makes you uh, feel connected and closer to God. Thank you for joining this evening and may God bless you.